This is the message of the uncertainty and the negative consequences of radiation exposure. Having been born in a world where all the natural laws have been turned upside down, the piglet had a short life expectancy and suffered from severe mutations, which in the end There are still crazy things going on in Chernobyl to this day, decades after the explosion of the reactor at the nuclear power plant in April 1980. After the Chernobyl disaster, a lot of strange things came out of it. Now, in general, scientists around the world were completely surprised to find the wildlife in the exclusion zone came back much sooner than had been predicted, and life seems to be doing well considering the circumstances. Many researchers thought that life would take decades, maybe centuries, to come back from the accident, but it didn't, and the animals are doing rather well for the most part. Now, 10 years later, it appears that both the wild animals and the domestic ones left behind were indeed infected and have been born with major birth defects such as multiple heads, muzzles, and legs. Now they also found other defects such as cats with two faces, a lamb with eight legs, a two-faced calf, and another calf with legs growing from its back. In 1989, farmers reported birth defects in their animals. One cow even had a mutated cleft lip. Now as the years wore on, the cows continued to graze on contaminated food feed and internally develop less physically apparent complications, and despite looking relatively normal, cows near the zone produce toxic milk not fit for consumption. Then in 2016, footage of some very large catfish in the cooling pond of the Chernobyl reactor spread online, leading some to conclude that the radiation had supercharged the fish's growth. Now, Birds have also been affected by the nuclear fallout, and this is particularly true for the barn swallows around Chernobyl. In the early 2000s, the barn swallows population was observed to have several horrific mutations, including deformed beaks, disproportionate feathers, partial albinism, and significantly smaller brains. The Chernobyl exclusion zone is said to have contained 249 species of radioactive birds. Not to mention, as radioactive spiders build their webs to catch their prey, they add to the dangerous environment of the forest. These webs are not like normal spider webs. In fact, they are woven in abstract ways that suggest genetic mutation is at hand. Now, they're also highly radioactive themselves, making them a dangerous Danger for any non radioactive animal to touch. My advice is don't go near any of these animals. Now, according to Slate, in the early 90s, which was just a few years after the accident, radiation levels in the wild boar that died near Chernobyl were more than 2,000 times what's considered safe. And even today, eating animals from inside the exclusion zone and even as far away as Sweden is still pretty hazardous is still pretty hazardous. You might be exposed to radiation levels that are dozens of times higher than what's safe. Now it's safe to say that these animals have been going through it, but I'm glad that they are somewhat doing better. It's said that the radiation exposure still being emitted for decades after the 1989 nuclear disaster may have fundamentally altered the genetics of dog populations, according to a study published last year in Science Adventures. The genetics within dog populations that have been exposed to differing levels of radiation are also distinct from one another, the researcher said. The dogs still living around the exclusion zone are likely descendants of pets left behind after residents surrounding the Chernobyl power plant fled the region in a hurry, which is honestly just so sad. Researchers used preserved blood samples collected from more than 300 dogs between 2017 and 2019 in locations with various levels of contamination. Now, the volunteers began treating and sterilizing the dogs around the same time that construction began for the new safe confinement facility for the nuclear reactor that failed, and there was a concern that the dogs living in the area may be a problem. For instance, they have increased rates of cataracts because the eyes are the first tissues to show signs of chronic exposure to ionizing radiation. The silver lining though is that the unique genetic diversity of these dogs makes them ideal candidates for future studies seeking to understand the long-term genetic health effects of highly radioactive environments on populations of large mammals, especially in understanding the biological underpinnings of human survival in regions of high and continuous environmental assault, the researchers said. 
said. One of the many bizarre things about Chernobyl is the almost preservation of expired plants in the inclusion zone. According to the Smithsonian, vegetation in the exclusion zone just don't decompose at the same rate as it does in the rest of the world. Radiation has had a strong negative impact on decomposers like fungi, microbes, and certain insects. Then in 2002, scientists discovered fungus growing inside the damaged fourth reactor, where radiation levels are still extraordinarily high. But after subjecting the fungi to a series of tests, scientists learned that the stuff would actually grow faster when exposed to high levels of ionizing radiation. Now these fungi developed a unique mechanism to harness radiation for growth. They utilize melanin, a pigment found in their cell walls, to convert gamma radiation into chemical energy. Now the process is somewhat similar to photosynthesis, where plants use chlorophyll to convert sunlight into energy. But instead of sunlight, the fungi are using radiation as their energy source. Weird, but cool. From a biological standpoint, it provides insight into how organisms adapt and thrive in hostile environments, which could be crucial for understanding life in extreme conditions on Earth and potentially even other planets. So hey, maybe something good did come out of this horrible situation. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. The Soviet version is this. From radiation-eating mushrooms to people who swim in reactor wastewater, these discoveries in the exclusion zone can't be explained. Up first, the Red Forest. One of the most striking features of the Chernobyl and Pripyat exclusion zone is the Red Forest. The Red Forest is actually within the zone of alienation, the most heavily irradiated parts of the exclusion zone. The incredible amounts of radiation expelled by the meltdown wiped out the forest in its entirety. Every single one of these trees is dead, and the orange or red coloration is the deceased leaves and needles. But the radiation has another interesting effect, it seems, one of preservation. The Red Forest is one of the most contaminated sites on the planet, and it seems this radiation may have wiped out almost all organisms that would otherwise break down and consume the dead trees. Which means that even nearly 40 years later, much of the forest still stands. What scientists don't know is how this forest will collapse or grow in the future. It has, however, since become a lush wildlife refuge, harboring several endangered and rare species, despite the massively increased risk of cancers and birth defects for animals within in the alienation zone. Next is toxic dust. As Albert Einstein once said, there are only two things that are infinite, the universe and human stupidity, and I'm not so sure about the former. Well, if anyone was going to prove Einstein right, it would have to be a battalion in the Russian army. When World War III lights started, a massive invasion force was sent south through Chernobyl and Pripyat and towards Kyiv. Somewhere there was some pretty serious communication issues though, or knowing the Russian army, no communication whatsoever. I assume the interaction went a little bit like this. A general said we need to dig trenches to hold on to our captured territory, so start digging. But sir, we're in the middle of the most radioactive piece of land on Earth. Did I stutter, Private? And so, several trench systems were dug into highly irradiated soil, which not only poisoned the troops in the trenches, but also kicked up a 1980s era cloud of radioactive dust, which was only made worse by all the tanks and trucks driving through. Dear God, why do you give the biggest booms to the smallest brains? Next is PCH-126. Also known as the Hospital of Doom, Pripyat City Hospital 126 is the most irradiated building in Pripyat, only rivaled by the reactor and fallout zones themselves. PCH 126 was the primary site of care for 237 plant workers, firefighters, and soldiers in the immediate aftermath of the disaster. What makes it the most irradiated building in Pripyat, however, is the basement, and more specifically, what's in the basement. A pile of clothes. Though it doesn't sound scary, right? Well, those are the clothes that the workers and firefighters were exposed to the initial radiation blast within. Those clothes are so incredibly irradiated, they forced the abandoning of the entire hospital within days of the incident due to skyrocketing radiation. Even after almost 40 years, the radiation is still incredibly lethal inside PCH-126. And yet, people still visit, and even more inexplicably, there have been recordings taken inside that seem to at first be affected by the radiation, and then show brief glimpses of people shambling through the halls. Many believe the building to be haunted by the nearly 30 people who perished within it. Next are mushroom cloud mushrooms. The Chernobyl meltdown didn't 
actually cause a mushroom cloud. At least, not initially. It wasn't until 1991 that scientists discovered a new sort of cloud of mushrooms, radiotrophic fungi, or fungi that eat radiation. This species was known since 1890, but wasn't discovered to be able to turn ionizing radiation into energy until 1991. Interestingly, the fungi uses melanin, the same compound that humans and many other animals use for pigmentation, to help them absorb and convert radiation into food. This is similar to photosynthesis, which uses photonic radiation from the sun for energy, but potentially much, much more useful. It's been hypothesized these fungi could be used as a lining for spaceships to consume radiation before it affects the crew, or for a whole host of anti-radiation treatments. Next are Stalkers. The Incredible Stalker series is a game set in a fictionalized Chernobyl exclusion zone, which involves anomalies, monsters, and other horrors beyond human comprehension. You'd think a game about throwing nuts and bolts into fissures in space-time would encourage people to stay out, but nope, it seems to have encouraged a real-life group of stalkers, like YouTuber SuperSus, who has repeatedly swum in and drank from the waters around Chernobyl and explores the tunnels, bunkers, and Soviet remnants within the exclusion zone. Obviously do not do this, it is insanely dangerous, but scientists really cannot explain why people do stuff like this. Is it just a desire to explore the unknown, a habitual disregard for your own life, or something else? It makes no sense. Up next are mutations. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the radioactive exclusion zone is chock full of mutated animals. There have been radiation induced mutations like cats with two faces, lambs with eight legs, and calves with legs growing from their backs, but there have also been adaptations. Adaptations. The wolves of Chernobyl have been recorded to have several adaptations. They seem to have higher quantities of melanin in their fur and skin, and have several adaptations that have been discovered to significantly reduce the risk of cancer. It's not known yet exactly how these adaptations function or what other adaptations there may be. Sadly, due to WW3 light, researchers are essentially banned from the area. And finally, the elephant's foot. The elephant's foot is one of the most famous remnants of the meltdown. Essentially, when when the meltdown occurred, a runaway nuclear reaction went off, heavily boiling the cooling water, which led to a steam explosion, scattering radioactive material. But the melting down core continued to run away until it melted through the bottom of the reactor in a massive slag heap. This pile of molten graphite, uranium, titanium, steel, concrete, and zirconium is an incredibly dense ceramic that required armor-piercing 762 rounds just to break off chunks to be tested. Since the incident it has cooled both physically and radioactively, but little later research has been done. One stunning tidbit is the growth of uranium dioxide dendrites, almost crystal-like tentacles that grow along the walls around the foot caused by the radiation. Those were terrifying Chernobyl discoveries that scientists can't explain. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Want to see more videos like this one? Check out this video next. It's about mysterious doors that have been sealed for centuries and what lies behind them. Let's take a peek behind these doors and find out why they were sealed once and for all. Click the video now to find out more.